Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'm going to go over an Elegant Themes Bloom plugin tutorial. So if you don't already have an Elegant Themes membership, I have a discount code below that will get you 10% off, as you can see right here, and that's WPWithTom.com slash Divi. And just know that if you purchase any Elegant Themes membership, that you're going to be able to use the Bloom plugin with it, whether it be the yearly membership or if you get a membership that is a lifetime one, you'll be able to use it either way. So to get started, you're going to need to have your membership for this and you're going to need to log in and you're going to see this area right here. So this is where you're going to go to. It's the products downloads area and here you can scroll down and see Bloom right here. And what you're going to want to do is download Bloom and then save the file. And you're probably going to need your API key, which you can find under the My Account area, and then API keys to enable your actual API key for Bloom if you haven't done that already. So from here, we can go over into the dashboard and go to where it says Plugins, Add New, and then we're going to upload a Bloom plugin that we just downloaded. So from here, you're going to want to find where your actual plugin was. I'm just going to go here hit show folders and I'm going to drag it over and drop it in and then install now. So it's going to install it. It says plugin installed successfully. I'm just going to click activate plugin. So I'm going to X out of elegant themes now that it's activated, but over here we can see what our website actually looks like so far. You can see as I scroll down, nothing happens. There's no pop-up or anything like that. So I'm going to go through how to set one up now. So let's go to bloom settings right here. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a new opt-in and here it shows you the different options. The key ones here are the pop-up comes in the middle. This fly-in comes in the lower right by default. You can also change that. This would go below a blog post. Here's inline. This would be if you have locked content that you want to prevent access to and basically prompt someone to sign up with their email address to see that locked content. And here would be a widget which you could put in your sidebar or different areas on your website such as the footer as well. So I'm going to go and use this fly in one here. This is my favorite one to use. And here you can choose a name for this one. And I'm just going to call this one 10% discount just for this example here. You can name it whatever you're going to be able to remember once you actually go and look how it's performing later. You want to have a unique name that you're going to be able to tell it apart from other ones. So I'm just going to call this one 10% discount. Here we can select our email provider. Now I actually use SendFox as my email provider for my mailing list and it's a great option. I honestly think it is the best option for people that are just starting out and trying to build a mailing list because it's the most cost effective way to start one when you're first beginning. But for this example, this isn't actually an option on this list to have SendFox on here, at least at this time. So I'm going to use MailChimp, which is another free to use option when you're first starting out and it's a popular one. So I'm just going to go with that one. So what we're going to do here is select account and my account is WP with Tom and my email list is WP fundamental. So you'd want to go to MailChimp and set that up here. When you first log in, you're going to be prompted to set up a basic email list and account. And then to get your API key to validate it, you'd go over to your profile and then within your profile, you'll go to extras to find your API key. And that's where you'd find it right here. So after you've done that, you can actually just validate it within the Bloom area back here. And then you can go and move to the next step, which says design your opt-in. So from here, you're going to have a variety of options that you can choose from. And really, it's up to you completely on which one you want to use. I'm going to use a pretty basic one. I'm just going to go and use this right here. And then from here, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and go to next and customize. And here's really where we can customize it and make it our own. So once we get to this page, we're going to see that we now have this preview button over here. If we click this, we can get an idea of what our actual opt-in will look like. So it already looks good right out of the box just because of the way they've set it up within elegant themes. But I'm just going to change the text on this a little bit and then just show you how to set it up. It's very easy to do. So let's just go through this. So I'm going to just paste in, get 10% off your next order here. And then I'm also going to paste in the next section for the message area. 
and I'll just put in something that I already pre-wrote here. So right here is your opt-in message and it says join our mailing list. If you want to see where that is, you can again preview it right here and it says join our mailing list right underneath of it. So I'm going to go and put my own in here. And if you're happy with that, you can move on to the next area. Now this says if you want the image above the text or below the text, the right or left, I'm going to leave it as is above the text. I like how it looks right here. I think it gets people's attention when it scrolls up like that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to the background color. And for this area, I'm actually going to use this opt-in styling as white. So I'm going to leave it as is. And then down here, I'll scroll down. And if you wanted to, you can change the email field here and the text for the button. I'm going to leave it as is and just go down to the background color. I'm going to make this yellow right here. And for the button color, you can see what it looks like when you start to preview it here. The button is purple right now. I might change that color to make it a little bit different. So let's just go and make it like blue or something like that. You can always check it and see what looks good. That looks good enough for me. And then I'm going to change the style to be this one over here. If you want to add form footer text, you can do that here. I'm going to leave this as is and the success message as is. And I'm just going to move on to the next one, which says display settings. So right here, something I like to do is I like to actually use a different delay than the trigger timer, which is 20 seconds. What I like to do is I actually uncheck that and I'm going to use trigger after scrolling and check that. And I want it to go into effect when someone scrolls 50% of the way down the page. So when someone goes 50% of the way down this page, I want it to pop up in the lower right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the display on to be home page because that's where I want it. If you want it on post, you can have it there as well. I'm just going to have it on home page for the simplicity of this example here. And then I'm going to go to next success action. So over here, it says success message. I'm just going to leave it as is the default and I'll click save and exit. So you can see right now it says zero impressions, zero conversions, 0% 0 conversion rate. So if we go over here, let's go and refresh this page now. And if we start to scroll down at 50% of the way down, there it goes, it pops in. It's a small page, so it pops in right away once you go halfway down the page. And if you wanted to, you can style it with different colors and just play with it and see what works best and what looks best to you. But let's say you get somebody to sign up for this with their email address. So I'm just going to put wpwithtom1 at gmail.com and just click subscribe. And right there it says you have successfully subscribed. So someone could just opt in that easily to your form right there. And then if we go back here, let's go to Bloom Statistics. You can see now that it says there's one subscriber opted in to the form. So that's how easy it is to set up the Bloom plugin and to actually get people to start signing up with your form and capturing their email address. From here, you'd want to go and look at that information or put emails in place through MailChimp or whatever email provider you're using. But that really covers the basics of setting up the Bloom plugin. So I really hope you enjoyed this Bloom plugin tutorial. If you did, please consider giving it a like or a thumbs up and subscribing for more WordPress related content. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.